And when you added more companies to it that were using it and trying to communicate using this technology, that the system administrator didn't have to go and do something and set up new relationships with each one of those for each type of pair of communications that was a uh, pair of companies that wanted to communicate. That's just too hard to actually make work. So um, with that, we um, you know, put, put together this, this product. And I think it's going to be hard to explain how this actually works without the slides for that. So um, where, where are we on, on getting those up? Julie, are you still there too? Or? Let's see if I have a message over in the other window. Nope. Okay. Um, so let's well let's you know take a take a stab at explaining this uh, as is. Um, oh, excellent! There's a slide. <laughs> uh, let's forward, go forward to about maybe get a slide or so if you can. Give this a second here to get to the right slide. Um, okay, go one more slide forward. And one more slide forward. Can you, let, let's see, can you still go to one? Yeah, perfect, that slide. If you could full screen that slide, it would be just perfect. <clears throat> So let's, let's talk about the, the details of this, how it, how it works here. Now, um, what happens initially is there's a bunch of different enterprises that are represented on this slide. And they are all deploying this Viper technology that connects to their PBXs. And the first thing that they do is all of the systems participating in this join a, a global distributed hash table. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer network that everybody joins. And it's a large part of that peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, nature that allows us to build a very scalable system. So the, uh, one more slide forward. Um, okay, so the, um, the, the first thing that happens is, is, is um, all of these nodes joining together, joining this peer-to-peer -peer network and, and, and forming this system. Then the uh, you can step forward on there's a build here just step forward one step. Um, let's see if you can step forward two steps into that build. Um, the next thing that happens um, is that all of the nodes. Um, take their phone numbers that that enterprise is responsible for. So we've got all these enterprises, A, B, and C here, enterprise A and B, have both joined this distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. Enterprise B takes all of its phone numbers and it publishes the phone numbers that it's claiming it owns into this distributed hash table, which you can think of as a, a database sort of in a distributed network in the cloud. Okay. Now, Enterprise A doesn't necessarily have any reason to believe that any of this information is correct yet. I'll talk about how this is secured in a bit. But this allows one enterprise to tell the rest of the world, hey, these phone numbers come to me. Okay, one more step forward, please. Um, so the, uh, okay, so what happens is the first time Enterprise A goes to phone the phone number of Enterprise B, the phone call gets routed just over the PSTN 
as, as perfectly normal as it, as it would today, right? There's, there's, there's no added features, there's no added functionality. But it does go over that way. Now, the next thing that happens when we step forward, please, is that the when that call ends, both Enterprise A and B um, know the start and stop time of that call. So that forms some information that they can use as a shared secret. This they can leverage up into to knowing that both people saw that call. So one more step forward, please. So now what happens is Enterprise A and B, um, their IME systems or this Viper technology talks to each other and it says, well, you claimed you had this phone number, but prove to me that you really do know something that only the person who actually know has this PSTN phone number would have. And they use this start and stop time of a previous call and who called each other to leverage up that security relationship. So Enterprise B can prove to Enterprise A that it actually does have that phone number. The phone calls to that phone number get routed to it. It sort of owns it. Okay? And this is, this is the real um, key aspect of this technology is using the fact that the PSTN forward routed the number as a, a key way to secure and understand who owns a number. And this is a very difficult thing about any namespace is understanding who's authoritative for a namespace and how to delegate it. And this was you know, one of the key parts of how we, we work around this um, problem in PSTN numbers of understanding who knows them. So next slide, please. All right, next build. Um, so once this, um, this proof point has happened, um, the, the IME server pushes back into the PBX, hey, I know a route over the internet. It's a virtual SIP trunk that's just been dynamically discovered. Nothing was configured about it. The IT person didn't have to go do anything to add Enterprise B um, so that they could, you know, Enterprise A could solve it. It pushes this route back to the PBX. The next time that someone inside Enterprise A dials that same number, it knows a new route that's been validated over the internet. It can use so next slide with our next build, please. Um, so this um, means that the next time that Enterprise A dials that number, um, what will happen is the call will go across this effectively SIP trunk across the internet instead and go to Enterprise B. Next. And since it's just a normal SIP trunk, we get all the types of things that could be negotiated over SIP. So these are the same type of things we get inside of the enterprise. We would get uh, video, we'd get wideband audio, we'd get uh, whatever you know, sort of features that could be negotiated over this. Now, the other thing that we do is we continue to monitor the, the, the quas and voice quality. And if there's voice quality problems across the public internet, the system can be configured to uh, fall back to a PSTN call if that's what people want to do. And our sort of initial rollout and testing of it, um, you know, we, we haven't seen this at all. We've been very comfortable with it. But, one of the sort of real design constraints of this whole system was we felt that to make it easy for IT people to deploy it and decide to use it, it had to never be worse than what they currently had, right? It had to always improve. We didn't want a situation where the CEO was complaining they had bad voice quality or something like that. So this is um, an important part of the design for making the whole system uh, deployable and really roll out, though we don't actually think it'll get used very much when we really look at practicality of what's happening on the internet and general voice quality calls. I mean, we all use calls all the time like Skype. You're, you're very well aware of the uh, uh, quality that's cheap across the internet, um, generally speaking today. Clearly, there's places where it doesn't work well. Next slide. Um, so lots of technologies that get rolled out onto the internet can uh, start with not being that secure and then try and add security as time goes on. This is really difficult in this type of environment. This is something with business-to-business -business communications, and we just felt that there was a ton of security issues that had to be dealt from day one. So um, the media and signaling is all encrypted from the very beginning. We found out that some enterprises didn't want to use encrypted signaling inside of their enterprise, but they want to use it on the public internet. So if they don't want to use it inside, we can have it be not encrypted inside of the enterprise and encrypted as it passes the firewall, um, depending on what people want to do. Um, obviously, they want NDN security inside the enterprise. They can do that as well. Um, we try and uh, protect the way that the, you know, I described earlier, the phone numbers are published in the DHT. It's actually uh, an encrypted hashed version of them that reduces the amount of information that we pulled out of that. There is the whole thing I talked about of 
stopping other people from advertising your number 